Welcome back my dear friends. I am a little bit sorry for the longer delay between the videos, but we had a little COVID fight in the family. But I am back and we are starting the advanced module with this episode. So we're excited. So what can you expect in this video? We're going quickly over the next few lessons and we will start another workflow as well. Plus at the end, I have a question about a bonus video for you. Make sure to stay tuned for that. So if you have not yet claimed your voucher, by the way, for the $20 free ebook from Nime, make sure to click the first link in the description down below. Totally free, just like this course, no strings attached. All right then, let's start with module three. In this very lesson and in the next ones, we're going to talk about flow variables. They are an amazing concept within Nime, which help to reduce manual input. For example, it allows you to automate your file creation. No need to go into the Excel Writer node and manually select where it needs to be saved. And we're going to do exactly that later in this very lesson. So continuing with flow variables, we're going to have a theoretical look at them in the next lesson. Then we determine how we can create flow variables from the workflow in the lesson after that. And next is the idea to create flow variable from input widgets. Like like drop-down menus. And finally, we're putting all this together in the final lesson where we once again build a complete workflow from scratch using the methods discussed before. If this sounds a lot, don't worry, we're going through this one by one. And in this very lesson, I give you a good overview with the first workflow. So the next big thing in Nime then in this module is using extensions. Nime is very modular and chapter two of this module covers two amazing extensions I use day in day out. All I'm saying is formatted Excel output like colors and stuff plus automated reports. In the last chapter we will cover how to automate NIME under Windows so it runs frequency like every day to fulfill routine tasks and all that without opening NIME itself. This will really make you look pro. If you don't want to miss out on this make sure to hit like and subscribe. So before we turn to the computer and start the first workflow with flow variables let me give you a brief intro into flow variables. Maybe you remember variables from math and science classes in school. They have one task and one task only. They hold information, like a box that contains a present. Interesting part in NIME is that you do not have to set up these flow variables manually. Instead, you could leave the heavy lifting to NIME. So let us quickly turn to the computer and I show you how. And remember, you find the link to the source files in the description below this video if you want to follow along. All right, so here we are in our trusted Nime environment with a completely empty workflow. And as I said before, you'll find it linked in the description below this video. So the first thing that we do, like nearly always, we want to import some data. And we do this with our trusted friend, the Excel Reader node. And we want to import the PVO data we already used in the last episode or in one of the last lessons, all right? double click it to configure. And this time we want to look in the folder relative to the current workflow. So that enables me to share the workflow and the files with you. Okay, so browse, here we have it. It's called PO example data. Let's just quickly have a look at it. Ah, it's once again, one of those messy exports from a ERP system. So we want to work on the sheet worksheet. That is fine. It holds our headings in row number four. So we update that. And we don't want to read the whole data. We want to start from column D, column D. And we want to start from row number three. That is the first one. All right. So that looks pretty good. If we look at the preview here, we say, okay, we execute and see, we have a file table here. This is our trusted PBO data. We have 1001 rows and that 1001 indicates that the total reporting volume line is still in here. So we need to get rid of that. You surely know how to do it, but I show it once again. We use a row filter, um, select the Excel reader, double click to connect and call this remove total line. We want to remove one where the vendor is empty and therefore we click only missing values match in the vendor and we want to exclude them. So execute this one and now we should have a thousand rows. 
no more totals down here. First, we want to get the list of the buyers because at the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to have a file per buyer with today's date that shows which volume do they have at which supplier per buyer. So one file per buyer. Therefore, we first need to extract the um, buyer names and that's what we do in the next few nodes. So the first one is a duplicate row filter because as you can see from here, we have the buyer uh, buyers in here uh, several times, but we just want them once only. Okay, you recognize in a moment why we want to do that. So let's have a look at the duplicate row filter and we want to basically remove dupe entries in, here we go. So let's make it like this, but bing, but a boom. And now we only have each buyer once. The next thing to just focus on the buyer names is to remove all unnecessary columns. And how we do that is all should also pretty be pretty clear to you. It's the column um, filter, which we drag and drop onto the canvas, connect here and say, okay, friends, we only want to keep the buyers. So reduce to buyer column like this one. If we now execute this, we only have the names of the buyers. That's already pretty much what we want. And this part of the workflow is only going to serve as a kind of input for us to later select which buyer we want to choose and automatically create a file for them. And the next node just does that. It's the nominal value row filter and we put it onto the canvas, connect it. And here we can then later on select the buyer that we want to create the file for. So for this example, let's just take Minerva Myers, like this one here, select buyer. All right, and now we enter the wonderful world of flow variables, because so far we have a NIME table. And you see that, that the data is routed through these black lines, through these black triangles. Now we're going to work with flow variables from now on, and that has a new visual symbol, so to say. So the next thing we want to do is we want to turn a table row into a variable, and that node is called, very easy, table row to variable. So double click it, and what it does, it makes our table rows a variable, our selected. So we make, we turn the buyer into a var. Var is the abbreviation for variable in my case. All right, so execute. And now you see all of a sudden, we don't have that black triangle at the end anymore. We have the red dot. The red dot indicates a flow variable. So let's have a look at the variables output. You see that the name is now stored in something that a variable that's called buyer that is of type string. You see the repeating visual language of name here as for string and the red dot for a flow variable. Okay, so we also want to filter the PVO by the buyer selected. As you already know, we can connect more than one node to our Excel reader, for example. So let's put in a row filter. And we move him down here. Make it a little bit beautiful like this. And now we can tell Nime basically through the flow variable we just created how we want the row filter to work. So we connect this red dot here to the upper left corner, the flow variable input port. You see this now, this is connected by this red line. And now this flow variable that we have seen before, buyer becomes available in the row filter node. So what do we want to do? We want the column buyer to be evaluated and we want a pattern matching here. And instead of selecting here, we click this little button. This little button always indicates flow variables. And we say we use the variable buyer, if you remember. And now we get a little warning that is nothing bad here, but it just says the pattern parameter is controlled by a variable. Just that we know, hey, there is something we have not 
entered ourselves, but that comes from a flow variable. We click OK. Let's just label it filter PBO by buyer selected. All right, let's execute this. If you remember, we chose Minerva Myers here. So let's see if that works. Execute. And all of a sudden, we already can see we only have Minerva's line items here. So the very next thing we want to do, of course, if we want to somehow summarize it, we use a group by node. Group by. And what we want to group is we want to group the vendors and we want to have their PO value and not the mean, but the sum. Right? We use keep original names and we label it group vendor by PO value. All right, execute. And now see, this are the buyers that Minerva Myers is taking care of with their respective volume. So one other thing we want to do is we want to export this to an Excel file, but we don't want to relabel or rename it every single time we choose a new buyer. So we can use flow variables for this one as well. So the next one we're going to use is string manipulation. But this time we're using the flow variable variant of that. And there is one. Look here. String manipulation. You know this already and it will look very familiar, but it only works with flow variables this time. So double click to edit here. Okay. So we want to get the buyer's last name because a file name with a comma and a dot like it currently is, is maybe a little bit too complicated. So that's what we do here. All right, so let's get into it. And I have already prepared this here for us. So it goes a little bit faster. Basically, what it does is very similar to Excel. Um, I just look in the string buyer, look where um, the comma is in that string and basically take everything before the comma remains, everything after it gets deleted. So uh, I don't want to go into much details. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to have more info about string manipulation. I'm happy to do an additional video on that one. But this one should focus on flow variables. So what this does at the end of the day, if we execute it, it reduces our flow variable only to the last name of the buyer selected, in this case, Myers. The next one is we also want to have current date in here. And there is a very neat way to do that. So let me just quickly show you. There is something that's called a widget. It's the so-called date and time widget. We put it here. And the date and time widget, we, we can get the current date. And how we do that is very, very easy. Don't be confused here if you see all this. We want the current date, not the time. And we want the execution time, meaning the moment we run this node. And we give it a name of var underscore date. So we know it's a variable and it holds the date. All right. So let's execute this one. Have a look at it. Flow variable. You see it holds our date as of today. So I'm recording this on 12th of March 2022 and it holds this date. Now we have to put these things together and you might have guessed it. How do we do it with the string manipulation? Of course, once again, using the variable version of it. String manipulation variable goes here and to make them both available I click here and here connect both of them and now both variables are available in the string manipulation we have var date we have buyer let me just show you if I would have deleted that connection then the var date is not available because it is not connected that's why we connected so what does this not do it creates file location for Excel export. Okay, so I copy this in once again. So what this basically does, this is my local location. So if you follow it through in the on this lesson on your computer, this will be something different, you have to put something different in here. And very, very important, you see wherever in a path, you have this backslash, you have to do a double backslash that's called escaping because if I do that not or if I don't do that you see it is not recognized so you want to make sure that this is pink once it's pink as it is right now 
it works. So all backslashes need to be doubled. Otherwise, NIME will interpre interpret this in the wrong way. So the one thing we need to do here is we need to give it a name var file path. So that's the path where we want to save it. Okay. Execute. Now we have the var file path. We have the date. See, we have the name of the buyer plus XLSX. That's nice. There is just one more thing that we need to do because right now, as you can see here, it has the data type of string. And if you don't know what data types are, just have a look at the video that is linked above somewhere there. I don't know. Um, we had some in-depth lessons about data types as well. Okay. So the one thing we need to do is we need to turn the string into a path so we can utilize it in our Excel writer. And of course, as always, there is a variable for that string to path. Uh, there is a NIME node for that, not a variable, um, and it has a variable version. So we use this one. And the one we're going to use here is just this one, mar file path. All right. Okay. So we call it a string to file path. Execute it. And you can see now I have a file path var file path location. It has P, which is the data type file path. And that is what we can use in our Excel writer. So that is the one last note we want to add here. And it just goes here. We connect it to the pivot table, quote unquote, or the grouped table that we created. We call this export. Um, Excel file and of course to get the file path variable available in the Excel writer we just connect it and let's just double click that and say here we don't change any of these we just click on the little var button here and say okay we use this variable it almost automatically recognizes that for this file path there is only one variable available so we choose this one okay we say okay we want to write the column headers that's fine portrait landscape auto size columns and let's do this and execute it just a moment and then just quickly have a look at the desktop and there is our excel file awesome so that's it flow variables makes you look pro and it effectively is a pro function Wow, that is amazing, right? It might have been a little bit fast for a full understanding, but that will come with the next lessons. So in the meantime, I have a question for you guys. Would you be interested in a bonus lesson that shows how to create interactive workflows, meaning workflows that have a real user interface, where you, for example, could select a buyer from a dropdown instead of opening up a note? If yes, leave a short comment with hashtag bonus down below in the comments. So that's it for this lesson. Make sure to like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out the next ones. So see you in the next lesson and bye. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.